Hey everybody, it's Ivy. So today I'm going to be showing you how to make a lace frontal wig with no baby hair. This is going to be a very detailed video, very in-depth. I've gotten a lot of requests to do this. Okay, so let's get right into what we're going to need. You're going to need a Japanese swim cap. These are my favorite type of caps to make wigs out of. They're stretchable, breathable. They hold their shape and they're just, you know, they're the best. And you're going to need a um, mannequin head. I like to use size 21 because that's what matches my own natural head, okay? So you want to get a really nice quality frontal. This is from Kelai Hair. I think that's how you pronounce it. And this is their 13 by 6 frontal. So what you want to do is make sure your knots are bleached. That's really important. And now we're going to get into positioning the frontal on the mannequin head. I like to position my frontal about an inch above the cap. I feel like the lower you pull down the frontal, the larger the unit will be. So keep that in mind. But standard, I would say an inch works pretty good. Um, you don't want your frontal to be down too far. Then you're gonna have to like pluck too much away. So I go ahead and pin that right in the front. And then I like to pull it back and pin it right in the middle. So this will give me some stability so I'm able to go ahead and attach the sides properly. So this is very important. You wanna take the edge of the frontal right there, put a pin through and you wanna pin that to the cap. Now you wanna pull that as snug as possible. This is gonna ensure your wig fits really nice and it's not too loose. So this is how everything should look once you've pinned down your wig. And 13 by six frontal actually takes up majority of the wig head. So you know, this shouldn't take long to make this wig at all. And the type of thread that you should be using is a nylon thread. This thread is stronger, it lays flatter, and your wig will hold together forever. I get mine from Sally's Beauty Supply. And what you want to do is start stitching from the edge of your frontal. And I like to do the loop and pull method. You guys already know. That's how I like to stitch my frontals. And um, one thing I've been questioning a lot is when you're using a larger frontal, like a 13 by 6 frontal, people want to know how do you get rid of those gaps because this frontal is so large sometimes it, it's gaps in between and you guys can actually see the gaps right there I'm gonna show you how to make sure those are flat and your wig doesn't look you know bunched up or lumpy so just go ahead and sew that all the way around nice tight firm stitches and once you're done doing that, I want you to go back in. We're gonna do a second layer of stitches. This time you wanna pay close attention to those gapping areas, those areas that are lifted up on the frontal. And you wanna like put your stitches through that. And this is gonna help everything lay flat as you guys can see what I'm doing right here. You just wanna reinforce the frontal and this is just gonna help everything, you know, lay nice and smooth. And as you guys can see right there, I'm going right through the gaps. I'm stitching right through the gaps, the loop and pull method. And this is going to keep everything nice and tight together. And when you're doing your wigs, you guys, you want to make sure your stitches are nice and close together and small. Like, don't do big sloppy stitches because it's going to ruin your wig. You're going to be pissed and your wig going to end up raggedy. So this is how everything should look once it's stitched. It should be nice and neat tight flat now we can go ahead and add our tracks and i'm using the eyeliner to outline exactly where you're supposed to place the tracks you guys so this is my exact track placement okay these are the exact areas where i sew my wigs this is the exact spacing that i use so all you guys have to do is follow the lines. When you're making your own wig, you can actually draw lines on your wig so it makes it easier for you so you know exactly where to sew. Once you get to the top, you're actually gonna sew in a different way. You kinda sew, I like to call it in an upside down C type of shape and that's going to help you feel in the wig so what you want to do now is observe where your tracks are supposed to go okay look at the placement look at what you're doing and go ahead and get into the hair 
So let's go ahead and get into the hair. So this is the Brazilian straight from Kalai Hair. And I use um, three bundles of 24 inch hair. And it's so nice and silky. We're gonna go ahead and put this on the unit. And I'm actually going to double my wefts because I wanna get as much hair in here as possible. So right here, I'm gonna show you, this is the exact track placement. You're gonna put the track down and you're gonna sew, okay? And then you're gonna move to the next line and the next line and sew on. This is exactly how I make the wigs. Very, very simple and self-explanatory, you guys. So you wanna start off with a nice stitch. You wanna make sure you secure the ends of your tracks, you know, like where you're starting your track because you don't want your wigs to fall loose. You don't want any um, lumps or bumps. So make sure you're paying close attention to how you're sewing and how tight you're sewing, okay? So once you get to the end of the track, it should look like this. And I like to cut my wefts on my wigs because they just lay a lot flatter than when I flip it. So I just clip it right there and I like to do another securing stitch and that's pretty much all I do to sew on my wefts you guys and I just keep doing that until I reach the top that's literally all I do and right here I'm just showing you how it looks once I've added the tracks I follow my guideline and that's all I did so at the top I just wanted to show you guys what you have to do with that last track which is very important you want to connect the edge of your frontal to the track so you're gonna stick your needle in through the edge of the frontal and wrap it around the track as well as your cap. What this is gonna do is make sure your wig is held together well. And it's gonna make it lay really flat right there and hide that like line of demarcation. So you wanna ensure you're going through the frontal around the weft and also around the cap. Now never sew in your weft. Sewing in your weft can cause so much shedding. So make sure you're always sewing around the weft, okay? And at the end, you wanna make sure you secure it very nice and tight. And this is how your wig should look like on the inside. You wanna go ahead and take some scissors and cut out the remaining portion of cap. I like to leave just a little bit of cap on there, you know, just in case um, you need to go back in and fix anything in your wig later on. Leaving a little extra cap will allow you to customize your wig later. So now I'm gonna show you guys how I pluck my wigs. I like to actually wet down the hairline this works so good for me like this is I, I pluck wigs really fast now and you want to brush back that hair and how I like to pluck is you just want to open and close your tweezers and move your hand across the hairline and at this point I'm only doing one section at a time and depending on where I place my teasers that is where I'm gonna get the hair plucked from so you wanna pluck around the hairline first, and then once you have that nice and thinned out, you wanna be sure you're moving your hand back and forth in and out. I like to hold the tweezers kinda of closer to the um, edge of the hairline first, and then I kinda of like move my tweezers back, and this helps me um, thin it out and keep it thicker in the places that I want. I really like this new um, method of plucking. It just looks a lot more natural. Like it looks super good. And I like that the hair is wet because it's able to like, I don't know, I think the knots like come out of the frontal easier when the hair is wet. So now I'm gonna spray on my tint spray. Just because the lace was a little light for my liking, I wanted it to match my skin flawlessly. And I'm gonna blow dry that in so it locks into the lace. And this is how my edges look once I was done plucking and they look so, so good. I know it's gonna match my head and skin. Y'all look at that on my hand, it looks it looks like scalp is seamless it's beautiful so now we're gonna turn our wig inside out and I'm gonna show you guys how I attach my elastic band and you want to sew your elastic band right where the elastic band of the cap would have been so you want to go ahead and put a stitch right here now elastic bands aren't mandatory but I like to add them because I feel like if you don't want to you know glue your units down 
or put like any gossipy or anything on it. Elastic bands definitely help keep your wigs secure and keep them in place. So it's definitely an option to think about when you want to have a wig that's really easy to install and take off on your own. So just make sure you repeat that process on the other side and that's all you do for the elastic band. So now I'm gonna install my wig, super easy to put on. I did put on a stocking cap that was my skin tone color. And I'm putting my elastic band on first and pulling down my wig. It's that easy, as you guys can see. Super, super easy. And today we aren't gonna be using any gel, any spray, any type of adhesive. We're just gonna cut our lace off with our eyebrow razor. Paying close attention to making sure I'm cutting this nice and, you know, close to the edge of the hairline. And we want this to look as flawless as possible. I really like using the eyebrow razor because it gives you a nice seamless look. Like it doesn't look harsh like it does with the scissors. And now I'm using a blow dryer, just smoothing out the wig and getting it in the right place that I want. And as you guys can see, that's flawless. It lays perfectly on my head. It blends, it matches. You guys, I'm just so in love with this wig. Um, I love it. This is definitely gonna be one of my like everyday wigs. And I did straighten it out just a little bit. And it's so pretty. And for this unit, I didn't want to do any baby hairs. Like, I just wanted to do non-baby hair realness. And I'm showing you guys how you can just simply part your hair and use a blow dryer to change your parting area. And it looks flawless still. It looks so good without baby hair. So let me know how you guys like my unit without um, baby hairs. I really think it looks nice and flawless. It's definitely seamless looking. It's so good, but that's all due to having a good quality lace. So definitely check out Kalai Hair if you want some good hair or really good 13 by six frontal. Their hair quality is amazing, so nice so silky everything just matches with my skin so good i'm definitely impressed with this hair so if you're interested please check out the description bar below i hope this video helped you guys make your wigs and i will talk to you guys on the next video